Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to take a couple of extra steps to help support the channel a little bit more, there's a merch store and a Patreon for this channel in the links below. And thank you guys so much for all your support. And okay guys, so for today's video, we are actually going to be doing another what if video on this channel. We haven't done a what if video in a long time and you guys really seem to like them and I have a lot of fun making them so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to do a what if video today. Now essentially what this video is going to be about is what if the Titanic's radio had been broken during the night of the sinking. Now for those of you who don't know the Titanic's radio actually broke down Saturday evening the day before the disaster and Jack Phillips and Harold Bride the Titanic's two uh, radio operators they essentially worked long into the Saturday evening and into the early hours of Sunday the Sunday morning to fix the radio. Essentially, they spent about six, seven hours the night before the sinking fixing the radio, and they were able to do so. But for this video, we're going to look at what if they didn't do that? If what if the radio had remained broken? How would that affect the night of the sinking? And honestly, the answer may surprise you. Now, before we jump into that, I do have one last thing I need to say. I need to give a huge amount of thanks to the members of my Discord for helping me in the research for this video, and I also need to give a huge thanks to the members of the Titanic Animations YouTube channel for helping me research this video. All you guys were extremely helpful in all the research that you all did, and you know, letting me know what your all's findings were in helping me prepare to make this video. So thank you so much. And if you guys would like to go and check out the Titanic Animations YouTube channel, I will have a link for that down below. But essentially what they do on that channel is they do their own animations of the Titanic, and they do some incredible work. They actually have live streams fairly regularly of them actually animating live, so you can actually watch them and talk to them during the live stream. They have incredible animations of the Titanic. They have incredible animations of the Lusitania. So I highly encourage you guys to go and check out the Titanic Animations YouTube channel. And uh, Jordan and Philip over at the Titanic Animations channel, thank you guys so much for all your support. You guys were extremely helpful. All right, guys. Well, hey, without any further ado, let's get into today's video. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, the Titanic's radio system did break down on the ship's maiden voyage. Officially, the radio broke down sometime in the evening on Saturday, April 13th, 1912, and the radio was brought back online around 5 a.m. on Sunday, April 14th, 1912. You see, Jack Phillips and Harold Bride worked long into the night in order to attempt to fix the radio. Although, one thing to keep in mind about this, they were not supposed to do this. According to the Marconi Wireless Radio System Manual, they were supposed to wait until the Titanic made it to port, and then an official Marconi Wireless Technician would fix the radio. They were not allowed to do this, and they could get in serious trouble for attempting the repair on their own. So, the big reason why the Marconi Wireless Company did not want Jack Phillips and Harold Bride to attempt to repair the radio was basically because these guys were not trained to repair a Marconi radio. They were trained to be operators of a radio, not repair a radio. I guess the best common term or common day terminology that I can use is think of it like somebody who uses a computer but doesn't know how to repair a computer. All of a sudden the computer breaks and then this person who doesn't know anything about computers tries to repair the computer. He would make it worse. And this was the whole idea around Marconi's rule on these guys attempting to fix the radio. You guys don't know what you're doing. You'll make it worse wait until the ship docks and have a certified Marconi wireless technician come aboard the ship and repair the radio on their own. And what they were supposed to do, just because the Titanic's radio broke down, the ship wasn't completely without a radio. The Titanic had an emergency backup Marconi wireless system that Jack Phillips and Harold Bride could use in the event that the main system went out. Although, where the main Marconi wireless system, the one that broke down, it has a range of roughly three, four, five hundred miles, sometimes a thousand miles if the atmospheric conditions are right. Now, the backup system only has a range of roughly 50 miles. So that means that Jack Phillips and Harold Bride, if they attempted to use this system to transmit the Titanic's messages, they would have a very, very hard time talking to anyone. The only way they could attempt to do their job with the emergency backup system would be to try to transmit a message to another ship that is within 50 miles of Titanic and then have that ship broadcast the message to wherever the final destination was. 
with a range limited to only 50 miles, the Titanic really couldn't transmit messages effectively. So basically what this means, if Jack Phillips and Harold Bride had not broken the rules and attempted to repair the Titanic's radio, then that means that on the night of the sinking, the Titanic would have been out of wireless range of all ships that would have been close enough to the Titanic to render aid to this vessel once the sinking of the Titanic began. This map does a great job in showing the Titanic's position during the night of the sinking in relation to other vessels that were in the area and could potentially render aid to the Titanic. Now, upon looking at this map, the only ship that is technically within wireless range of the Titanic, if it had been using the emergency radio, is the steamship Californian. But on the night of the sinking, the Californian's radio operator had already went to bed, so it wasn't receiving the Titanic's distress call. But this also means that the RMS Carpathia, the ship that actually did rescue the Titanic survivors, you see, when the Titanic first began broadcasting its distress call, it was 58 miles away from the Titanic. So if the Titanic had been using the emergency radio system with a range of only 50 miles, then it's quite possible that the Carpathia would not have heard the Titanic's distress call on the night of the sinking. Now, the Mount Temple, another ship that was close to the Titanic on the night of the sinking, it may have been able to hear the Titanic's distress call if it had been using the emergency radio system. The Mount Temple was roughly 50 miles or so away from the Titanic, so it was at the furthest possible range that it could potentially pick up the signal from the Titanic's emergency radio set. Now, if the Mount Temple did receive the Titanic's distress call, then the Mount Temple's wireless operator would have most definitely relayed that message to other ships in the area. So it is possible that if the Mount Temple had received the radio distress call from the Titanic, it would have let all the other ships in the area know that the Titanic was in distress and needed assistance. So think about it like this. This one decision by Jack Phillips and Harold Bride to attempt to repair the Titanic's radio the night before the sinking is the only reason why the Titanic was able to launch a distress call or send a distress call on the night of the sinking. I mean, just think about that. Even if they had attempted to use the Titanic's emergency radio system, it's very hit or miss if the Mount Temple would have heard the Titanic's distress call being at the maximum range that it was potentially possible to hear the Titanic's distress call had they been using the emergency radio system. And it's very, very unlikely that the Carpathia would have heard the Titanic's distress call with it being 58 miles away on the night of the sinking. So honestly, just think about that for a second. This one decision by these two guys to repair the Titanic's radio is the only reason so many ships were able to respond to the Titanic's distress call. And if no ships had heard the Titanic's distress call on the night of the sinking, then honestly, who knows how long it would have been before a rescue effort was put into effect to try to locate the survivors of the Titanic disaster that were waiting for rescue in the lifeboat. Who knows if by the time a rescue mission found the Titanic's lifeboats, if there would have been any survivors left to be rescued. So throughout this entire video, I've talked about how the sinking of the Titanic would have been impacted if the Titanic's radio had not been functioning on the night of the sinking. Although, what if I was to tell you that I have a theory, well, two theories to be more specific, about how when the Titanic's radio broke down, if Jack Phillips and Harold Bright had decided not to fix it, then the sinking of the Titanic may have been able to be avoided entirely. Now, my first theory on how if Jack Phillips and Harold Bride had not attempted to fix the Titanic's radio would have prevented the ship from sinking has to do with the entire wireless message drama that occurred between the RMS Titanic and the steamship Californian about an hour or so before the Titanic struck the iceberg. So in case you're unaware of this whole drama between the Titanic and the Californian, it was basically this. You see, about an hour or so before the Titanic struck the iceberg, Jack Phillips, the Titanic's wireless radio operator, was talking to Cape Race Canada from where the Titanic was currently sailing. At the time, Cape Race was roughly 400 miles or so away from the Titanic. Now, because Cape Race was so far away, basically the way wireless technology worked at the time was the further away a location was that you were talking to, the louder you had to have your radio set in order for you to hear the faint dots and dashes of Morse code from whatever location you were talking to. So because Cape Race was 400 miles away, Jack Phillips had his radio turned up to maximum in order to hear the faint dots and dashes of Cape Race's Morse code. 
But one very important thing to understand is that there were no different radio frequencies or anything at the time. Basically, anybody with a wireless set could hear whatever messages you were transmitting, no matter where you were, as long as you could pick up the radio signal. But because Cape Race was so far away and Jack Phillips had his radio turned up so high, that basically meant that if another person who was much closer to the Titanic tried to message the Titanic, it would come through as a very loud ring in Jack Phillips' ear. And this is basically what happened. While Jack Phillips was in the middle of talking to Cape Race, another ship called the Californian, which was roughly 10, 20, 30 miles or so away from the Titanic at the time, tried to warn the Titanic that they were stopped in an ice field. But when this message came through, it came through as a very loud ring in Jack Phillips' ear, which caused him to rip off his headset. And out of frustration, Jack Phillips sent a very rude reply to the Californian. He said, keep out, keep out, shut up. I'm working Cape Race, completely ignoring the Californian's warning about the approaching ice field that the, Cal that the Titanic was steaming directly towards at full speed. Now, the reason Jack Phillips sent this very rude message was, number one, because it was a very loud ring in his ear, as I just said. But the second reason was because Jack Phillips had basically gone a day, a day and a half without any sleep, because he was up all the previous night attempting to fix the Titanic's radio. So here's where my theory comes in as to how the whole broken radio thing may have avoided the Titanic from sinking in this first scenario. My theory is if Jack Phillips and Harold Bride had not attempted to fix the radio, and then on this particular night, they were operating off the emergency set, number one, Jack Phillips would have gotten plenty of sleep the night before. So when he would have been on the radio at this current time, he wouldn't have been so exhausted and tired Thus, he wouldn't have gotten annoyed so easily. And number two, he wouldn't have been trying to talk to Cape Race Canada. So his radio wouldn't have been turned up all the way. And when the Californian tried to message in and go, hey, there's an ice field, then Jack Phillips would have very calmly got the message, wrote it down, went to the bridge, reported it to the crew there. And basically they could have seen that they were approaching an ice field. So they could have taken the appropriate actions to prevent the Titanic from sailing into that ice field at full speed. Heck, they might have even stopped the Titanic for the night just like the Californian did. But because they fixed the radio and they were in the middle of talking to Cape Race, well, we all know what happened. He had that very loud ring in his ear. He didn't have enough sleep. So basically he told the Californian to just shut up. So that's my first theory how, on how if they had not attempted to fix the radio, then the Titanic sinking may not have happened. My second theory on how the broken radio may have prevented the Titanic from sinking has to do with events that occurred during the day on Sunday, April 14th, 1912. You see, for those of you who don't know, most of the ice warnings the Titanic received occurred during the day on Sunday, April 14th, 1912. And it was because of all these warnings that at right around 5 p.m., Captain Smith ordered the Titanic to divert and head further south than what was originally planned. It was his hope that by taking the Titanic further south, he could hopefully avoid this ice field. Although, unknown to Captain Smith, the icebergs and ice fields at the time had drifted a little bit further south than usual. So that means that because the Titanic received all these ice warnings on Sunday, the Titanic was on the course that it was, and that is the reason why it struck the iceberg in the location that it did. So here's my theory on how the broken radio situation may have spared the Titanic from sinking in this second scenario. It was because of all of those ice warnings the Titanic received on Sunday, April 14th, that caused Captain Smith to divert the Titanic and have it head further south. And that was the reason why it encountered the iceberg that it did in that particular area. You know, it was just, it was because the ship headed further south. But if the radio had remained broken, then it's quite possible the Titanic wouldn't have received these other ice warnings and the ship wouldn't have changed course and it would have kept going towards its original destination on its original planned route. Now, under this logic, it is very, very possible the Titanic could have struck an iceberg in a more northern area. Although, we don't know that. We don't know if that would happen. Maybe the Titanic's crew would start spotting icebergs sooner than what they did when the Titanic headed further south. You know, maybe things would have played out differently. It's just, who really knows what would have happened? All I'm saying is, it's another possible outcome. 
Maybe the Titanic proceeding on this more northern route would have sailed right through this whole upcoming ice field and not encountered a berg at all. You know, this is just a very, very big what if. You know, we don't really know. Maybe the Titanic's crew would have been proceeding with more caution because the Titanic's radio would have been offline. And these, these, the crew members on the Titanic knew the dangers of ice fields and they knew where they were. So it's just, who really knows what could have happened, you know? All I'm saying is what might have happened. But still, it's amazing to think how just the simple act of repairing a radio on board the Titanic really did alter the fate of this ocean liner. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. And boy, let me tell you guys, I really do enjoy doing these whole what if videos because it's so much fun to try to challenge your mind and think about how if just one little detail may have been different in the story of the Titanic, how the whole story of the Titanic could have played out completely different. I mean, it's crazy to think how just a few guys fixing a radio could have changed the outcome of the Titanic story so much. But honestly, as you learn from this video, it's quite possible that the decision to fix that radio really could have altered the entire outcome of the Titanic disaster. Now, before I say goodbye, I do need to give a big shout out to somebody in my comment section. Her name is Ellie Jones, and it was her comment that actually gave me the idea for this video. She actually suggested this idea in my comment section, and I liked it so much that I decided to make a video about it. So Ellie, thank you so much for the comment, and thank you so much for being a supporter on this channel. And guys, any video ideas or topics that you guys would like me to cover in the future, please leave it in the comment section, because I do read through the comments. I don't always respond or reply, but I do try to read the comment section as much as I can. So any ideas you guys have for future videos, please leave it in the comment section below. Oh, and hey, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, make sure you check out the Tales of the Protector's Almost Heaven Adventure Book. This is an adventure book series for anybody that likes the Chronicles of Narnia books. This is a book very similar to those. You know, it's a big adventure book series, and I think you guys would really like it. I'll have a link to this book in the description below as well. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit a like. If you're new here, please subscribe. And yeah, guys, keep doing what you do. You guys are awesome. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, everybody, and thank you so much for being here.